Welcome to the Orthodontics and Summary Podcast, where Farouk brings you the key points and understanding of orthodontic webinars, conferences, and papers in a concise podcast with your host, Farouk Ahmed. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled Class 2 Treatment, The Last Word by Kevin O'Brien. Here, Kevin looked at three main questions with Class 2 Treatment early versus late treatment, fixed versus removal, and patient-relevant outcomes. To start off with, the question of early treatment, usually between the ages of 8 to 10, and late treatment, the old classic two-phase versus one-phase treatment. He referenced the Cochrane Review by Batista in 2018, and the key findings from that paper showed there is no difference between the two when it comes to overjet, skeletal changes, power changes, and self-concept changes. But there was a statistical difference that was found. Kevin mentioned it was to his surprise as well. And it related to trauma. So an adolescent patient having late treatment usually has around 31% chance of having trauma. Whereas children treated in the early group had around 20% risk of trauma. So the overall difference was 12% between these two groups. That sounds relatively small. However, if we looked at the data from a different perspective and looked at the relative risk reduction, it was a third between these groups. So to translate this information, the relative risk reduction relates to just looking at those guys who have had trauma. So that information means that through having early intervention, a third of those children who would have had trauma as an adolescent would not have trauma. The numbers needed to treat was 1 to 10. So 10 children have to have early treatment for one child to benefit from not having trauma to their teeth. Now, what's interesting is how this information then applies to clinical practice. Kevin mentioned that this is a clinically significant difference between these two groups. And he described that this conversation should open up to the patient and describe to them the other disadvantages or advantages of early treatment. So he described how overall treatment takes nearly twice as long for early treatment. The cost is greater and there are poorer occlusal outcomes and patients can burn out through the process. The next question Kevin asked was that of fixed functional appliances versus removable functional appliances in the adolescent phase of treatment. And this goes back to Batista's Cochrane Review from 2018. And it showed that when it came to skeletal changes, both types of appliances were statistically significant in their changes. However, in between these two groups of removable versus fixed, removable appliances seem to have a greater change. The difference between the two groups was 1.8 degrees of change. But Kevin left it open to interpret whether a clinician felt that was clinically significant or not. In his opinion, it was. When it came to overjet reduction, there was very little in between the two groups. So we know that when it comes to the clinical changes in the patient's mouth, they are both effective at resolving the overjet. Now, the last question Kevin asked was that of patient outcomes for class two correction. For me, this was the best bit of the lecture. One is that Kevin made the admission that from his own studies, this information was not perpetuated and wasn't explored. And he would actually go back and rewrite his own lecture. Now, these papers by Kevin O'Brien from 2003 are hallmark and landmark papers within orthodontics. So it was humility, but also showing a real appreciation of the science and how things have developed. So what Kevin described was that trials tend to focus on clinical orthodontic outcomes, but not really looking at patient factors. He he gave the example of his own study from 2003, the twin block versus the herp study, a multi-center trial. And he described one of the key findings was the compliance factors were different. How the Herbst appliance was t- twice as likely to complete treatment if used compared to the twin block appliance. Now, non compliance of this twin block was associated with problems with eating, came to disturbance to their speech, and also to their sleep. The influence the twin block had on their schoolwork, people felt inhibited by speech. But also they felt embarrassed and bullied and occasionally bullied because of it. And Kevin stated that these these are the factors we should now be considering when it comes to our trials. And if we don't explore these avenues of the patient factors, we are actually missing treatment effects to patients.
as Kevin thought about the paper he wrote in 2003. A very enjoyable lecture from an expert within orthodontics. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Orthodontics in summary. Please stay tuned and subscribe for the next episode.